Hey guys, my name is Priscilla Elias and today I'll tell you a couple of steps you can take to make your product photography stand out. For the sake of this tutorial, today the star of my shots will be my backup camera, the Canon 80D. So we're going to shoot this together from scratch, from styling the shot to actually editing it. So come on and let's get this party started. The first thing I always do when it comes to product photography is to decide what I want to do from a photo. So I do some brainstorming about colors, positioning of the product, angle, possible props that can go with it, or in easy words, elements that can combine with it or that have something to do with it and that could help set the mood for my shot. And once I have an idea about all of that, if necessary, then I'll go to the shop. But before I buy anything, I always think if I don't have anything at home that I could use instead of buying something new. As I really don't like to accumulate things or buy things that I won't use later on, that way I can save money and help the environment at the same time. For this specific shot, for example, I decided not to buy anything. I don't want much in my shot. I just want some beautiful bokeh lights on the background and the camera itself. So that's about all I'm using. Some Christmas lights, the aperture light I already have, and the camera. I have two sets of lights I use for my photos, and the setup I'm using today was the first one I got before I even started thinking about doing YouTube videos. Back then I didn't have a continuous light. I didn't have strobes either, I still don't, but I had two speed lights I used for some of my portraits, but mostly for my weddings. And uh, then I bought an umbrella. I bought the shallow white, size M from Photo, and I bought it with a wide interior because I'll just get a softer light with a wide interior. And that's something that usually goes well with pretty much anything. The good thing about shooting with this set of light is if you already have a speed light, you can get an umbrella for around 40, 50 bucks, depending on the umbrella you buy and your set. It's one of the most affordable ways to shape your light. It is also pretty practical since uh, once you're done with your shot, you just close your umbrella, you put it under your arm and you're ready to go. It's super easy to carry all around, different from a continuous light that is not so easy to set up. The bad thing about it is you will only know exactly how your shot is going to look like when you actually shoot it, because you will have to have your speed light or your strobe flashing for you to check your light. But most of my life, this is how I shot, so this is not something that really bothers me. Another thing you might want to do when shooting product photography, especially when you need to take several shots with the exact same light, is to completely close your blinders. That way you will set your light according to what you need it, and it'll be exactly the same from the beginning to the end of the shot. I didn't worry about that for my shot though, because I'm only taking one photo, which will take me maybe 15-30 minutes, and I'm also recording this video, for which I need light. But if you need a sequence of photos, keep that in mind. So let's just get it started. It's time to set your tripod. It is very important to use a tripod when you're shooting product photography. It will give you more versatility in terms of shutter speed and will ensure you get a super steady, sharp and crispy shot. I don't usually use this. This is actually a monopod, but since I'm using the tripod I have to shoot this video with the other camera, then this is what I got left. And since I'm gonna be holding it all the time, then I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Done that, it's time to set the scene. I don't think I'm gonna end up using this today as I ended up choosing to go for the bokeh lights, but uh, this is another very nice tip for anyone who wants to shoot product photography. You might not have nice backgrounds to use in your photos at your house or in your studio. And the best solution for that is go to Amazon and buy some backdrops like this. That way you can create fake surfaces to your photos. So you see this is like a wood one and then on the other side you choose what it's gonna be. So it's like a stone, I don't know the name in English. So this is just one of them, but I bought a couple of them. I bought like a wooden one, like a dark one, 
then another dark one and a colorful one. I think I spent about 80 euros in all of this, maybe even a little bit less. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably have seen a photo I've done with one of these. So if you don't, follow me now. And you still haven't seen all of this there, but you will eventually on the next couple of months. So no, I don't have all those beautiful backgrounds at my house, they're all fake. But I think if I hadn't told you, you would believe they were real. You can try to guess when you see them there. So yeah, this is a nice way to make your product photography look more professional. By now, you might already have chosen the lens you're gonna use for this shot, but if you're not sure yet, this is the time to try it and see what you like best. For this shot, I'm gonna use the 24 to 70 because I can really use it at 70 millimeter and then go further from my subject and just get this beautiful bokeh back there. So let's just do it. I'm shooting it in live view, so every time I touch my screen, At the same time, I'm actually choosing the point of focus to my photo. I'm also pressing the shutter button. The delay you see on the video is happening because usually when I shoot product photography, I have the built-in two second timer activated. And the reason for that is because when the shot is actually taken, I'm not touching the camera. And that way I avoid any possible small movement I might have when taking the photo. Depending on your shutter speed, the movement might make your picture seem a little bit less sharp and you will want your picture just as sharp and crispy as possible so i strongly recommend to do the same it is also important to say that i'm using triggers with my speed lights that way i can use it off camera so i'll just put this one to my camera where the flash would normally be and the other one to the flash. And then when I press the shutter button, it'll just be triggered. There are another couple of things you should consider though when you're shooting with your off-camera flash. One thing I always do is to have my flash on manual mode. That way I can control the amount of light the flash will bring to me. Another thing I do is to control the focal length of my flash. So if I'm shooting with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens, for example, then I can choose my flash to be a 24 millimeter or a 70 millimeter. So the light will be 24 millimeter, which will be more spread, or it'll be more focused on the product. So then, for instance, I'll choose the 70 millimeter. So you'll just have to try a couple of things and see what works best for your shot. And still, when you shoot product photography, don't expect to have your photo ready straight from the camera. I mean, of course, that would be perfect. And of course you can do that, but you can always work with your photo in post-production. So don't worry if you don't have everything right. I mean, maybe you don't have two lights. Maybe you just have one. Maybe you don't have something else to make it colorful. Well, you can just work with what you have and then you can just do one, two, three, four shots without moving the tripod. And then you can just fix that in post-production. And I'll show that to you in a minute. Maybe you don't have a colorful light, but maybe you have two speed lights. And if you have two speed lights, you can just get a gel to one of them or to both of them, depending on what you're gonna do. And then you place it in front of the flash and you'll have a colorful light. This one, for example, I just bought it on Amazon. So I can just stick it to my flash, you see? And then it's pink. But then here I have all different kinds of gels. So I can just choose the color I want. When I'm taking photos for product photography, I tend to look at each small portion of the photo to see if I like the light in all of them. Most of the time I end up setting my light in two or three different directions. And I also end up shooting in two or three different apertures. So I have a couple of options that will allow me to improve the shot when editing it. The main reason why I do that is because I don't have a monitor. Then I might be surprised when I open the photos and maybe see that a small part of it is out of focus or the entire photo is out of focus. So I play safe and take a lot of photos. Sounds kind of hard. So let's make it easy. Come on. And as I told you, I took a lot of photos with the light in different directions. I just saved all of them because I'm not sure what I'm going to use for this. Let's open up my Lightroom. As you will see, I took some photos from the front of the camera with no lens, some with the lens, with the pink light set in different directions. But the one I'm really sticking up to, which I really like, are these ones. I really like the ones from the side. This is the photo I decided to go with. 
My first idea was to use one or two shots with a pink light, but I ended up liking the one with no light at all. I just thought it was cleaner and straight to the point. Plus, we already have the bokeh lights back there. So I started editing it, and in the end, I started thinking it was a little bit too much. So here's what we'll do. Let's take this to Photoshop. The first thing I'll do is to make a copy of my layer. That way, if I mess it up, I still have the original layer at the back. So to make a new copy of the layer, I'll just hit Common J. Okay, here it is. And now the main thing I want to do in Photoshop are the major corrections. I want to make that black cable from the bokeh lights disappear. And it could be much easier if I had some lights with a white cable, but as I told you earlier, I didn't want to end up buying something else that I wouldn't end up using later. So I decided to just do the changes I needed in post. It is important to you know that this will make you work some more though, or maybe a lot more. Plus, not always you'll be able to do everything you had in mind, so it'll be safer if you just have everything right for the photo. So now we'll go to Filter, Noise, Medium, and then I'll set the radius really high, so I'll pretty much vanish the cable from the background, along with some shadows I have in my wall. I think at around 190 is good enough. Then I'll click at this button here to add a layer mask to my layer. And now I'll show you why I do that. If I select the brush tool over here and set it to black, once I paint over my image, I'll hide the blur effect I just created for the layer. Now if I come to the brush tool again, and this time set the color to white, then I can get the blur filter back to the exact spots where I want the blur to be. You see? So I'll just paint it white all over the cable. And to some parts of the wall. So I'll get rid of this black cable and shadows. And if I do something wrong, if I paint a part that I shouldn't have painted, then I just set the brush to black again, paint over the part I want to look like the original version, and then it's done. Then I can set the brush to white again and finish what I was doing. Now I'll select both of my layers, hit Common J to duplicate them, and Common G to group them. So now I have a third layer with all the adjustments I did, keeping both the initial layers I had under, and also the new layer. And then for the tip of the umbrella showing here, what I'll do is I'll get rid of it with the Clone Stem tool. So I'll select the Clone Stem, hold Option, and select the part of the photo I want the umbrella to look like, and then paint over the umbrella. Now I'll do the same with the box here. This looks good. Select all layers, Common J for new layers, Common G to group them all into a new one. Then I'll select the rectangular marquee tool and what I'll do to this layer is to edit this box. I just think it's a little bit too big compared to the camera and it ends up bringing too much attention to it. So I'll just make it smaller. I'll copy and paste the frontal part of the box. So it created a new layer with this new part of the box and now I'll place it where I want it to be, like this. Then I'll create a new layer mask like we did to the first layer. Select the brush tool with the black color to it, just like we did before and paint over the areas that I want to hide from this layer. My brush was too soft, 
and I want it to be harder, so I'll hide exactly what I want to be hidden with uh, no fading effect to the brush. Now I'll hide the corners so I see where they start exactly. Okay, brush tool, white color. Let's get the corners right now. Hardness set to 100%. Let's make the size of the brush smaller. Now let's make a careful selection. Too hard. Let's make it a little bit softer. Okay, looks more natural now. And then I just work on it until it looks good. Then I realized that when I added the blur to the background to get rid of the cable, I ended up losing sharpness to the edge of some of the bokeh lights. So I'll fix that now with the clone stem tool by cloning some of the good corners to replace the bad ones. Okay, with that fixed, I'll create some more bokeh lights to my photo. I think in the end we just got too little. So I'll just multiplicate in Photoshop by clone stamping different ones to different spots, like this. Now let's go to the final and easiest step of all, the color grading. I always use Lightroom to do that because I think it's just so much faster to do it there. But if you're used to Photoshop, you can always use that as well. So I'll open up my Lightroom. First thing, the tone. I'll increase the contrast here to around 20, 23 maybe. Bring down my highlights a little. Bring up my shadows a little. Bring down the blacks, bring the clarity up, maybe the texture, no, just the clarity, to around 15, 16, 16 is good. Bring down the saturation a little. In the tone curve, I'll split it in three like this. Then I'll bring up my shadows a little to set a muted vintage effect, but just very little. Bring down my mid-tones a bit. The highlights, they're good. Shadows, maybe mid-tones a little bit, highlights as well, let's see, I like it. Then in color, I'll bring down the saturation to my greens, aquas and blues, I'll change the hue to my yellows, greens and blues. This looks good to me. Mess with the tone curve a bit more. And in split toning, I'll add a little bit of warmth to my highlights. No, I like it in zero. I'll add a little bit of blues to my shadows. Maybe around 9%, this is good enough. Now in sharpening, I'll sharpen up my photo without adding grains to the parts that are out of focus. And to do that, I'll add a mask to the image. To do that, set the sharpening to, I don't know, can be even 1%, just a little bit. And then hit Option and bring up the slider to select the areas where you want your image to be sharpened. And then you can increase the amount of it. Let's see, around here is good. 
Now let's see if I'll do some calibration. I usually bring the blues to the turquoise side. Since I desaturated all the blues from this photo, it doesn't make much of a difference. Now let's go back, contrast up a little. Blacks down a little. Mute my blacks a little bit more with the curve tone. Let's see, before and after. Now I'll crop it. And uh, this is the final image. And that is it. This is my product shot properly shot for the Canon 80D. If you like this video, don't forget to please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and also click the notify button so you will be notified when I release new videos. This will really help me to get noticed by YouTube and that way I can create more and more content for you. So I really appreciate it. I hope you like this video. I hope it helps you to do some amazing product photos out there. And let me know if there are any other tips you want to know about product photography. I would really like to help you out. So please let me know. Well, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.